challenge, I went home and I slept like a baby. And it was like an awesome feeling because for that three weeks, I forgot about killing myself and my child. I'm a better mom, no longer using drugs. I want to live. I began to um, excuse myself from bad company, bad relationships, bad things. At the end of the seven weeks challenge, my life was completely changed personally. I were no longer suicidal. I were no longer having spiritual attacks, insomnia, seeing shadows. I was a loving mom. I were, uh, I had a desire to live for the first time in my life. Most of all, my biggest blessing is the Holy Spirit. It's like being able to sit over here and smile, be able to have problems. I have problems every day. I get up, phone is calling, voicemails, emails. But you know what? Those are problems. And I have a bigger God inside of me that gives me the proper response. They give me the proper attitude. Instead of internalize those problems inside of me and say, I give up, I wanna die. I just say, hey, what is the problem today? How are we gonna provide solutions to these problems? I'm here, I'm up every day, I'm looking, I'm smiling, I'm joking. If I have the lifestyle I have today, if I have the properties that I have today, if I have my business, the awesome children that I have today, it's because I listen, I obey, and I respect God and the people He chose to talk about His Word, the people He chose to teach us what to do. Don't doubt that. I did all of this because I sought first the Holy Spirit and to obey the Word of God in Jesus' name. I bless all of you and I wish all of you the best. And one day, you'll be in my seat giving your testimony as well.
Good morning, America. The Spirit of God is with you, people. Let us start in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen, people. Good morning. Good morning. Amen. Listen, people, today, God shall deliver you from your problem. And because God is here, people, you should not leave here the same way you came in. Amen? Yeah. I want to call everybody here who says, Pastor, I have trouble to sleep at night. Those who have trouble here that may be suffering with depression. Those who are here who says, look, Pastor, it's hard for me to go to sleep because I toss and turn. They are in your place. You can leave and come to the front, please. All those who are struggling to sleep at night, all those who suffer with insomnia, depression, anxiety, everybody come, those who are here, and let us start in Jesus' name. God will make a way where there, where seems, there seems to be no way. He works in ways we cannot see. He will make a way for me. He will be my guide. Hold me closely to His side. With power and strength for each new day. He will make a way. He will make a way. God will make seems to be no way he works in ways he works in ways we, we cannot, cannot see. see he will make he will make a way for me he will be my guide people say hold me close hold me closely to his side with love and strength with love and strength for, for each, for each new, new day, day. Yes, my Father. Only you, my God, can make a way for these people, God. Because these people came here, my God, this morning, Lord, to be delivered, God. They didn't come, my God, expecting, my Lord Jesus, to leave the same way, God. So if you are, my God, the way maker, then you have to make a way in these people's life, God. You have to set those, my God, who are troubled to sleep at night, God. Those, my God, who cannot see, my God, to do it right, Lord Jesus, God. They try taking medication. They try, my God, putting on background music. They try, my Lord Jesus, sleeping on with the TV. But because, my God, this insomnia, my God, has taken away, my God, their peace, God. And this is why they came before you, God. So my Lord, deliver these people, my God, this morning. Morning, God. Those who, Lord Jesus, my God, are struggling, God. They suffer with anxiety, my God, because no matter what they do, trying to call their nerve, they try going to doctors, physicians, but nothing seems to work, my Lord. So if you are, my God, the way maker, God, they make a way, my God, in these people's life, God. Make a way so that they may leave here, my God, knowing, my God, that you are the way maker, God. That they may leave here, Lord Jesus, God, with a sense of peace, my God. That they may finally, my God, can understand what it is to be a normal person what it is my God to feel alive my God so my Lord Jesus my God stretch your hands out this morning God those who are depressed my father those who are here Lord Jesus struggling for a long time God this depression has taken away my God all they strength God all they could do is cry at night my Lord all they can do my Lord Jesus God is shed tears because this heaviness this burden this struggle my God has taken away all oh, my God they peace Lord many of them can't even eat oh God but my Lord, are you going to leave your people, my God, the same way, my Lord? Who are you going to make a way right now, oh Lord Jesus? So people, as you hear before the front, people make, a, make your prayer at this moment. 
make this prayer at this moment, people. Don't stay quiet. You came before the altar of God. You humbled yourself. Now you have to speak to God right now. He said, call on me on the days of trouble. He will deliver you. And he brought you here this morning to deliver you, people. So make your prayer at this moment. Make your prayer, people. Don't be silent. Talk to God. He's going to make a way this morning. And you're going to leave here, people, feeling a new person in Jesus' name. So make your prayer right now. away where there seems to be no way. He works in ways. He works in ways we, we cannot must. see. And he will make a way for me. He will be my guide. Hold me closely to his side. With power and strength for each new day, He will make a way, He will make a way. Yes, people, those who are in the front, place your hands upon your head. Everybody's there saying, place your hands upon your head and close your eyes right now in Jesus' name. In the name of Jesus Christ, wherever the spirit of insomnia Working inside this person's life. Right now, I give you an order to leave this person's life. This evil that been working for a long time, impeding this person to go to sleep. This burden, this stress, this worry that been taking this person by force. I give you an order right now in the name of Jesus Christ to leave this person's life. This evil that been taking away this person's sleep. This person not able to go to sleep at night. They close their eyes. They toss. They turn. Because you spirit of insomnia. You have taken this person's life. You have taken the joy of this person. But I give you an order right now in the name of Jesus Christ. To leave this person's life right now. To leave this person right now at this moment. In Jesus' mighty name. The spirit behind this anxiety. This one that's been working for a long time. This anxiety attack has been taking force. This person cannot seem to be in a closed room. Every time this person closes their eyes sometimes, all they can feel that their heart is beating. All they can feel is like something is there coming over them. But right now, I give you an order right now in the name of Jesus Christ. This evil has to leave this person's life. This evil has to show himself, and it has to leave right now in Jesus' mighty name. Yes, every heaviness, burden, stress, every worry that's took in this person by force. Every works of a sermon, this person here, they've been struggling for a long time. This evil has taken this person straight. This person not able to do nothing right now. But this evil right now, you have to leave this person's life. You have to get out right now in Jesus' mighty name. Repeat after me. Say in the name of Jesus Christ. Heavy heaviness. Every burden. Because his words is faithful, he has delivered you. You no longer have to worry about this psalm and this depression. People, go in peace because the spirit of God is with you, people. God has delivered you. He is faithful. And because his words cannot fail, you have been delivered. Amen? Amen. You can go back to your seat in Jesus' name. Go in faith in Jesus' name. By a roadway in the wilderness, only In rivers in the desert will I see heaven and earth will fade. Heaven and earth will fade. But his words, but his word will still remain. And he will do, and he will do something new, something new today. God will make a way. See where they seem. Where there seems to be no way. He works in ways. He works in ways I we cannot see. see. He will make. He will make a way for me. He will be my guide. See, he holds me close. Holds me closely to his side. With power and strength. With power and strength. For each new day, for each new day, he will make, he will make a way. He will say, he, he will, will make, make a way. way. Amen. People, right now, I want to pray for those who are sick. 
as you see, you receive the water. He says, I am the Lord who heals you. And if he is the Lord who heals, then you have to leave here healed. Amen? Because what doctors cannot do, because he's the healer, God has to do. Because if your doctor could have healed you, he would have healed you. But because God is faithful and his words cannot fail, he's going to leave, you're going to leave your people healed indeed. You're no longer going to suffer with this problem for a long time, this arthritis, this evil that has been taking your life that's called cancer, this thyroid. You're going to leave here healed at this moment in Jesus' name. Amen? But for you to leave here healed, all you have to do is one thing, believe. If you believe that God is the healer, then indeed you shall leave here healed. And because his words are faithful people, what happened? You shall be healed. Amen? So raise your water right now to heaven at this moment. And let us determine that the healing of God shall come upon you in Jesus' mighty name. Close your eyes. Raise your water to heaven in Jesus' name. My Lord and my Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, oh God. My Lord, these people raise up this water, God, because they believe, Lord Jesus, God, that only you can heal them, Lord. This person has tried taking medication, God, but this medication has not been able, my God, to solve this problem, Lord. This person has He tried. works in ways. He works in ways I we cannot see. see. He will make. He will make a way for me. He will be my guide. See, he holds me close. Holds me closely to his side. With power and strength. With power and strength. For each new day. For each new day. He will he make. He will make a way. He will say, he, he will, will make, make a way. way. Amen. People, right now, I want to pray for those who are sick. As you see, you receive the water. He says, I am the Lord who heals you. And if he is the Lord who heals, then you have to leave here healed. Amen? Because what doctors cannot do, because he's the healer, God has to do. Because if your doctor could have healed you, he would have healed you. But because God is faithful and his words cannot fail, he's going to leave, you're going to leave your people healed indeed. You're no longer going to suffer with this problem for a long time, this arthritis, this evil that has been taking your life that's called cancer, this thyroid. You're going to leave here healed at this moment in Jesus' name. Amen? But for you to leave here healed, all you have to do is one thing, believe. If you believe that God is the healer, then indeed you shall leave here healed. And because his words are faithful people, what happened? You shall be healed. Amen? So raise your water right now to heaven at this moment. And let us determine that the healing of God shall come upon you in Jesus' mighty name. Close your eyes. Raise your water to heaven in Jesus' name. My Lord and my Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, oh God. My Lord, these people raise up this water, God, because they believe, Lord Jesus, God, that only you can heal them, Lord. This person has tried taking medication, God, but this medication has not been able, my God, to solve this problem, Lord. This person has tried, my God, going to different type of physicians, wasting money, my God, from A, B, C, my Lord, going to this specialist after this, God. Here, my God, false hope that this medication will deliver you, that if you try this, this will solve you, God. But the word healing has not yet existed inside this person's body because this cancer, this thyroid, this, my God, evil has took him by surprise, God. This diabetes has been destroying this person's life for a long time, God. This person been visiting, my God, going to dialysis, trying to be healed, trying to be, my God, set free, God. But because, my God, your words are faithful, Lord, you have to heal your people today, God. They cannot come, my God, to this place, my Lord, that we call the spiritual hospital. Leave the same way, God. They cannot come this morning, Lord Jesus, God. He coming to be healed, Lord, and leave here, my God, the same way, God. So through, my God, this water, my God, send your healing at this moment, God. Through this water, Lord Jesus, God, deliver your people at this moment, God, and bring healing, my God, inside their body in Jesus' mighty name. People right now, determine right now your healing right now. Ask God right now what you need to be healed from. Say, God, if you are the God of healing, deliver me from this cancer, this thyroid. Deliver me, Lord Jesus, God, from this evil in Jesus' name. Right now, right now, people, take your three sips right now. Take three sips 
In Jesus' name. Yes, drink your water. Drink your water and be blessed. Be blessed by the Lord. He is the healer. And he heals you. Be healed. Be free. In the name of Jesus Christ. To break every chain. Break every chain. Break every chain. There is power in the name of Jesus. Raise the water now. There is power. Of Jesus to break every chain, break every chain, break every chain. Amen. Amen. Good morning. Every morning, drink your water. It's a spiritual treatment. Every morning, you shall drink your water. Amen. Listen, please. I want you to come here before me. You who are a mother whose son is on drugs. Come here before me. Hold on for a sec. One lady once said, in the universal church, we burn a lot of calories. Because we raise the hands, we put out the hands, we walk forward, we go back forward. It is not just a service, a church service or a mass. It is... Faith in action. Amen? It's less talk. Come on now. Less talk and more. You who say to me, Bishop, my son, my daughter is on drugs, is on the streets, on gangs, rebellious. Come here before the altar. Are you here yet? If you have their pictures, bring their pictures. Come here to me, please. With their pictures. My son is on drugs. My daughter is on drugs. They are rebellious. They are here in America. Or they are back home. They don't listen to me. Coming before the altar. You who have somebody in jail. Somebody that is in prison. I always include in my prayers. The prisoners. Coming forward as well. You have a problem in your family. The family that is... They have, they fight, there is no understand, no communication. Come here as well. I have a marital problem, problem my marriage. Come here as well. Because now we are going to take care of the family. Yes, we are going to take care of the family. Bishop, I feel there is a curse in this family. Everybody in this family suffers from the same problem. Moving from one to another. Myself, my children, grandchildren, come forward, please. To break every chain, break every chain, break every chain. Let us break every chain. To break every chain, break every chain, break every chain. There is power in the name. Of Jesus, somebody to say there is power. There is power in the name of Jesus to break every chain, break every chain, break every chain. Amen. This young man that prayed for us at the beginning of the service. Listen, he is a son of Fort Lauderdale. Maybe you do not know him. Maybe you do not know him. I know some people know, but you who are new in the church, hey, you are new in the church, you do not know him. But he's a young pastor, auxiliary pastor, over there with us in New York. But he is from here. Your name again? Forgot your name. Eli. Eli. Like the prophet Eli. 
Hold the mic, oh, buddy. Sorry. Eli, you from here, right? Yes, sir. Before I pray for their family, their children, just tell us your story, your background. Summarize. So in a summarized story, so before coming to the church, no, actually, I grew up in church. You know, I went from church to church, even this church, too. I remember going to the church, CBC, as young as CBC. And coming to the church, I started, but I didn't take it serious, you know. And then after that, sooner or later, I got caught up. When he says, I did not take it serious, he was not born of God. He was in church, going to many churches since he was a young boy. Even in the universal church, going to the CBC. Hello, CBC churches. Churches, teachers, let us take care of the youth, the children, because he was one of those. Why did you leave the church? Oh, just money, friends and money. I can say friends and money because first it was the friends, you know, getting around the environment you was, and then you like school, no, neighborhood. Neighborhood. Yes, my neighborhood. So my environment, you know, I grew up with those, but we was playing football and stuff like that. Then after that, we got involved with like trying to get money. We got involved with trying to get money. You know, so we went from trying to get money, you know, from there, then it started picking up, went to the mall, stole before the mall. Even that's my first time even getting in contact with the law at the mall. Supposed to watch a movie, one friend was like, you know what, let a shoplift, shoplift, and from there, that's the first encounter at 14. What about gangs, drugs? Oh, yeah, then from there, just started picking up from gang. I mean, from that, I went from, you know, shooting dice, from shooting dice, gang affiliated, getting in trouble with the law, going to jail, used to Tell drink. them which area here for them to reach. To know where you were. Oh, I'm, I'm from Fort Lauderdale, but I'm from Sunrise. Sunrise, right, right here behind us. Uh, that was your hood. Yeah, that's my hood right there. Yeah, hood. Uh-huh. And there you were doing your things. Oh, yeah, that's what I was getting down. Mm -hmm. What did the judge tell you? Oh, yeah, the judge told me like this. The next time I see you, I'm going to give you a maximum sentence because I was supposed to get 11 years in prison. Maximum was 15. So next, she said, next time I see you, I'm going to give you maximum from this plus Everything else that you come with it. But you are in and out for how long? I was in and out of jail, you know, my, my real, real time being locked up behind bars, 17. 17 yeah. years old. Yes, sir. So well, Why did she say, I see you next time? Oh, next time, because I was a prior. You know, next, I was, I was a prior. I was always getting juvenile, in and out, in and out. And then I caught my adult case. You know, when I caught the adult case, that's when the reality really Is your mom here today? She's right there. Call your mom. Come on, mom. <laughs> come, come, come. She's the true witness of this troublemaker. I mean, ex troublemaker. <laughs> no longer troublemaker. Praise the Lord. How are you? <laughs> you see your baby here? I'm choking back. You're shot? Why? Yeah, because nobody don't tell me he's coming. I talk to Surprise! <laughs> <laughs> Listen, she was here praying for him, for the family, for the sisters. Now you know where your son is. My pastor. You know what he's doing. Yes. Uh-huh. So prayers that you are going to pray for your children, for your family is not in vain. One day, she was here in the church praying for the family, praying for him. He was then troubled with the law, money, drugs. But he's alive. You're supposed to be dead. Let us pray for the family. Amen? Amen. Actually, I'm going to ask him to pray for your family because God did for him, for his family. God's going to do for yours. Raise the pictures right now. Hold your mom's hand here. Let us pray for the family. Close your eyes right now. A family that prays together. So now close your eyes. Pastor Eli. My Lord and my Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, oh God. God, today we're able to witness God your power, Lord. But each mother here cannot say the same thing, God. It is not that I'm special, God. Not that I'm better. Not that I'm more privileged, God. 
It's because, my Lord, you hear, my Lord, the tears, my God, of my mom, God. The same way this mother, my Lord, maybe right now tears go down her face, God, because she know right now her son may be in prison. She know right now her son, my God, there. She left him back home sleeping, my God, knowing he's going to get in drugs, my God. This daughter that haven't spoken to her, my Lord, in a long time. This husband that is probably there drunk, my God, confused, frustrated, God. But this is why, Lord Jesus, God, you allow this to happen, God, because one day, my Lord, you believe, my God, I will stand here before your people as a witness, God. But do for this mother, my God, as you have done for mine, God. Wipe away the tears, the shame, my God. Wipe away the disappointment, my Lord, that this person, my God, is facing, Lord. Wipe away, my God, the anger, the frustration, the confusion in this family. This life, my God, that is broken, my God, this family that doesn't, my God, seem to be together, Lord, because this mother, my God, maybe been praying for a long time. This mother, my God, is there, Lord Jesus, God, and not able to see your power. God, we Lord. bless, oh Lord, this family. We bless this house. Today, this mother, father, are crying. But in a near future, they are going to be able to say, as for me and my household, we will serve the Lord. We bless you and bless your family in Jesus Christ's name. Amen. Amen. Soon you will be testifying as well. One day she was on the other side, but God did it. He's going to do for you as well. Amen. Amen. You may go back to your place right now. Amen. Don't take your son home. No, you he stay here. You go alone, you stay here. Easy, easy, be careful. Amen. I lift up my eyes to the heat. Be seated, please. For where does my help come? My help comes from my Lord, who made the heavens and earth. Who made heavens and earth. He won't. He won't let my foot be moved. Keeps me is the Lord. He who keeps me is the Lord. But the one who keeps Israel. The one who keeps Israel. Will never slumber nor sleep. Will never slumber nor sleep. Somebody to say, The Lord is my keeper. The Lord is my keeper he's the shade on my right hand he keeps my soul he protects me from all evil he keeps my going on and my coming in from a warning Amen. In a few, I'm going to call you back here. All right? It's a non-stop minute. We do exercise. Not just next door. You know what I'm saying? Not just next door. Here we exercise as well. But listen, I want to bless your finances. For healing, the Lord said, you shall anoint with oil and pray. And the sick person will be well. For deliverance, he said, in my name you shall cast out the demons. For family, he said, believe in the Lord and you shall be saved. You and your household, your family. However, for prosperity, he did not say for us to pray. Hey, for prosperity, he said, give you shall receive. Who wants to receive? Show me your hand. Who wants to receive? Huh? Who wants to receive? Everybody does. However, he said, pray and you shall receive. Yes? Um? Good. He said what? Give. Give. Give and you shall receive. The Lord said, actually, it is a question. He said, who has given me anything 
that I needed to pay back? Who has given me anything that I needed to pay back? What have you given to God? Only our lives. Before we were born, everything was created by him. So he did not give anything. Let me ask you, who brought anything to the world when you were born? Huh? When your mother gave birth, did you bring a house? It's paranormal activity. Did you bring a car? Did you bring money? No. That's why he's saying, who has given me anything that I needed to pay back? Everything under heaven. Where is my choir? Everything under heaven. So, if you are going to give it to the Lord, a dollar, a cent, a million, it is already his. He said, uh, everything under heaven, here, on, is his, belongs to God. That's why when we talk about tithes and the offering, we are not paying for the prayer. We are not buying God. No one can buy God. It's not a bargain. I'm going to give you this money to be blessed. We are doing the campaign of Israel. You are not buying God. You are not bribing God. But you are just returning to him. What is his? Because when we came, we brought nothing. Who has given to me that I should pay? He said everything. Everything. Read over there. Can I have it back, please? Come on, come on. Thank you. Everything under heaven. So everything here on us is his. He said it's mine. He just lent it to us. When you bring the tithe, you already return what is his. You are going to prepare now the tithe. You are going to prepare right now your offering, knowing I'm mean, just giving back what is his. Prepare this tithe right now. You are going to prepare your seed, and you are going to give it to the Lord your seed offering. Go ahead. Prepare right now this seed. Prepare right now this offering, and you are going to present it to the Lord. The Lord is my keeper. He is the shade on my right hand. He keeps my soul. He protects me from all evil. He keeps my going out and my coming in from now on and forever. Amen. Listen, if you are at home right now, you can also call this number, sow your seed. You can go online and sow your seed. Believe everything under heaven is his. Amen? You are going to bring right now your offering, your tithe. You are going to serve the Lord. Go ahead. Come here. Bring the, uh, the offering back. Bring here, please, this machine. And let us now serve the Lord. As you are giving to the Lord... Much, much more. The Lord will give it to you. Yes, you can go ahead. Come here right now. And those who are at home, you can serve the Lord right now. All that I am, all that I have, all that I hope to be, I give. To you, I give to you. I am an offering. I am an offering. All that I am. All, all that I am. All that I hold. offering 
somebody to say, I lift my voice. I lift my voice. I want to hear the church also. I lift my life up to you. I lift my life up to you. I am an offering. I am an offering. Tell him, Lord, use my voice. Lord, use my voice. Lord, use my hands. Lord, use my hands. Lord, use my life. Lord, use my life. It is yours. I am an offering. That I hope to be all oh, that I hope to be. I give to you. I give to you. I am an offering. I am an offering. Lord, use my voice. Lord, use my voice. Lord, use. Lord, use my hand. Lord, use my life, it is yours. Lord, use my life, it is yours. I am an offering. I am an offering. Tell him all. All that I am. All that I have. All that I have. All that I hold. Titus, raise your hands to God, both your hands. Please close your eyes, O oh Lord. The tithe, or the Titus, is someone that honors you. We have not given anything to you except our lives, but you gave us the life. Even the life that we gave is yours. My father, Everything under heaven is yours. My life, my family, my body, my soul, everything that we acquire comes from you. So, a spirit of the Lord, bless the work of the tithes. And make, my Lord, the glory of this latter house to be greater than the first. I bless the tithes. And in this second half of 2023, the tithers, my father, will see the glory of God. They shall not take from Peter to pay Paul. Everybody is losing their money, their houses, they are losing everything. But these people here, your children, they shall have the best upon their lives. I pray, O oh Father, I bless them. In your name. Together we say amen. 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 Thank you, Pastor. Thank you, Assistant. The scripture says, you know, this coming Friday is the last day of June. The last day. What does it mean? The middle of the year. It passed by so fast. Six months, first half. So fast, Friday is over. On Saturday, we begin the second half. We have the term since the beginning of the year that this year will be the year of turnaround. The year of a turnaround. And we are going to pray in this second half based on this word next week, Sunday, this Friday. This Friday, we are going to pray based on what it says. The glory of this latter house, latter's temple, that is you. You are the temple of God. Shall be greater than the former, says the Lord of hosts. 
Your God is the God of hosts. In this second half, from July to December, you have to see the glory of God. That's why the second we are going to anoint you here in the church, the feast of the first fruits. And we are praying, you know, the temple of Solomon is the glory of the second house. The Lord said for the second house, he said, bring the whole tithe where? Into the storehouse. We say this temple, the temple of Solomon is the storehouse. And next week we are going to anoint the faithful tithes. As the word says, who has given to me? When you view God as the maker, as the creator, it's not too hard for you to return to him the very first fruit. So I'm going to bless the tithe envelope, give it to you. You are going to separate to God what is his. Amen. Amen, friend. Can I have the tithe envelopes? Let me bless the tithe envelopes. Oh, it's back on the, I, I'm sorry. My good. My good. Here we don't say my bad. If you want, you can take one of this envelope at the back of the chair. We are going to pray. And God will bless you in the second half for you to see the glory of God. Take this envelope, the tithe envelope. Yes, the people here in front do not have. Give it to them. Raise your envelope to heaven. Let me bless you in the name of Jesus Christ. Let me bless you right now. Close your eyes. Spirit of the Lord. I am praying for the glory in the lives of the tithes. We are finishing the first half, six months. In these next six months, my Lord, let the faithful, your children, faithful ones, to see your glory, to be a blessing. Yes, bless their lives with the best. They are going to bring the tithes, the offerings into their storehouse. So let them be a blessing. When they are working, remember them. When they are paying, remember them. Increase their paycheck. They are ours. Show your glory. Show yourself. This is what I ask, oh God, in the name of Jesus. Amen. Praise God. You may put aside your envelope. Keep this one that is blessed for yourself. Amen. We are going to show to you in a few the story of Isabel. This lady who was in a cave. This lady who was inside of the dam. The scripture says, the hand of Midian or the hand of the devil prevailed against Israel because of the Midianites. The children of Israel made for themselves, who made? God or themselves? So they made for themselves what? The dens, the caves, and the strongholds which are in the mountains. Look, they fled to the mountain. Over there in the mountain, you know nowadays, people do the same. They don't fight against the problem. What do they do? They hide. They had faith to build caves. It's like somebody that's burying himself. Don't bury yourself alive. God's not done with you yet. God's not done with you yet. I remember Mr. I'm sorry if I say it wrong. Dilip? Dilemma. Come here, Miss Dilemma, please. Mr. Dilemma, come here. Are you here yet? I remember your testimony. This one made a cave. Come here, please. Very quickly. He made a cave for themselves. Because of the problem. Praise God, we have many testimonies in this ministry. Many testimonies. Sometimes I mix them up. So your case was depression or disease? Depression. 
And he went to the cemetery. <laughs> right? He bought his coffin, his box. He prayed for his whole funeral. Because all he wanted was to die. He didn't want to live anymore. Because the suffering was great. And you are preparing your cave. Yes. I was preparing my cave because I didn't know what day was going to be. Because I was so in depression. I so was stressful. I didn't know what to do. So I say, well, let me get the gun. Let me get ready. Take the burden of my kids. You know, they don't have, because I know they won't have no money because they will leave me in the ice for too long. So I say, let me get ready. Yeah. Listen up. This is what the children of Israel did. As it says here, for the hand of media prevailed. There is something or someone prevailing against you, against Israel because of the Midianites. The children of Israel, like me, Mr. Dilemma, made for themselves the den, the caves, the strongholds. But now he's alive. How old are you? 83. 83 years young. He's free. He's now serving the Lord. Amen? Serving the Lord. But he had to come out of the cave. You are in a cave. You are the one to come out of the cave. Nobody will go there inside. Your friends, your doctor, your lawyer, they are not going inside to take you out of the cave. But you are the one like Gideon, like himself, to step out of the cave and say, enough. My life has to change. Amen? Thank you very much, sir. All the best. The Lord appeared to Gideon when he came out. Who wants to see God in their lives? Who wants to see? You need to come out of the cave. When Gideon came out of the cave, the Lord appeared to him and said, you are going to save Israel. You are going to deliver these people. And he said, oh my Lord, how can I save Israel? Indeed, my clan is the weakest in Manasseh. And I am the least in my father's house. He said, I am the least. This campaign of Israel is not for you to have a new house, a new car. It's not for you to be healed. This campaign of Israel at the temple of Solomon is not for you to have some blessings here and there. But it's for you to have a new spirit. That's why we are saying the change of spirit. If your spirit changes, everything is going to change. Once your spirit changes, and you who are at the home right now, maybe you say, I need a new home. Yes, you do. I need a new car. I need a new job. I need a new husband, a new wife. I need a blessing in my love life. Yes, you do. But if you still have the same old spirit, same old spirit, you are going even to leave the church, even if you have a new home, a new car, a new husband, everything you, you are going to leave. Remember the story of Eli. He left because he was not born again. New birth. Before the new stuff, you need a new birth. I will talk about it in a few. But now, let us watch the testimony of this lady, Isabel. You are going to see what to do and how to do to be a new person. Can we watch it? And you who are at home, please don't get distracted. Let us walk together. My name is Isabel Torres. I'm 48 years old, and I teach physical education. My dad was a warlock who practiced witchcraft and an alcoholic. And my brothers began to drink as well, even before they reached their teens. There was no peace at all in my parents' house. My dad always beat my mother he always beat my brothers. One day, me and my brothers, we were figuring out a plan of how we'd kill our dad because my dad was always threatening to kill my mother. He'd threatened to kill her. And that fostered in me 
a huge hatred for my dad. I hated my dad because of that. We couldn't have a family gathering without breaking out into fights. One day I got involved in a fight with my brother and he threw a glass at me and the glass cut me. That day I became transformed by hatred. I picked up a knife to kill my brother. But from that time on, I had a huge hatred for my dad and for my brother. Hatred for that place. I just wanted to get out of there, no matter what it took. So at 12 years old, I decided to run away from my parents' house. I thought to myself, if I leave their house, my problems will all go away. I hated everything. I was a slave to bitterness. If someone said something to me that I didn't like, I'd hold a grudge against them. I was that kind of person who had no compassion for anyone. If I saw someone who was suffering, even if I had the ability to help that person, I wouldn't help them. Because in my mind, they probably deserved to suffer anyway. I didn't believe in God. Around this time, various people would talk to me about God. Many who would talk about Jesus. People would always appear to talk about Jesus to me. I didn't believe. In fact, I was very arrogant, very conceited, very proud. I would make fun of people whenever they'd talk to me about God. During one of these episodes, when I just go wandering aimlessly around, I walk past the door of a universal church. And an assistant stopped me and handed me an invitation that said, Stop suffering. When he handed me that invitation, I felt so much hatred. I grabbed it and crumpled it up. I kept holding it and kept walking with it wadded up in my hand. So I opened up the invitation and I read it. And it, I came across things written there that I was going through at that time. That day I was feeling really upset. I felt so burdened. I felt a huge burden on me. And the words in that invitation caught my attention. But what really caught my attention was when it said, those who struggle with anger, because I was really explosive, really. And those words really grabbed my attention. So I turned, went back, and I went inside. I sat on the very last row, and at the end of the meeting, the pastor said, he quoted Matthew eleven twenty eight. 28. He said, Jesus said these words. Come to me, all you who labor and are heavily burdened, and I will give you rest. And he said, if you want to take off this burden that you've been carrying, if you want God to relieve you of your burdens in life, come up front and surrender your life on this altar. Jesus will carry your burden. And that word was right for me. I said, look, God, I, I don't know you. I don't know who you are. I don't even know if what the pastor is saying is the truth. But if you really are here, if what he's saying really is true, that you can carry this burden, then take it away from me. Because I was so tired that day. I wasn't physically tired. It was my soul that was tired. I remember that on that day, I was cleansed. I was cleansed. I left that place so light, and I really wanted to go back there. And one day, I was talking to an assistant, and I told her the story of my life. And then she said to me, look, if you want to feel peace, if you want complete joy, you need to receive the Holy Spirit because he's the one who will sustain you in hard times. He's the one who will give you complete joy. But for you to receive the Holy Spirit, you need to surrender 100% to God. You need to abandon the things that keep you away from God. You need to forgive. And yet... When I remembered that I had to forgive, my heart felt so upset because I didn't want to forgive. My heart did not have any desire to forgive. 
But then I thought, okay, if I've spent so many years carrying this grudge inside of me and I have no peace, then I do want peace. I choose to have peace because in reality, forgiveness is not a feeling. Our hearts don't want to forgive. That's why forgiveness is a decision. It's a choice that you make. You have to choose if you want to keep carrying that pain or if you want to be free from it. It had been 12 years since I had last spoken to my brother. So I made the decision. I choose to forgive him. I didn't want to carry that burden anymore. I found my brother, forgave my brother, forgave my dad, I forgave myself, and I surrendered 100% to God. I got baptized in water, and from the moment that I got baptized, I began to long for the Holy Spirit more than anything else. I wanted to have that peace, that complete joy. I sought the Holy Spirit at home. I sought him at work. I sought him in the middle of the night. I meditated on the Bible and I'd say, wow, it's written here that he who asks receives. And I could be asking you for so many things, but all I want is your spirit. I want your spirit because I want to remain firm. Because the Holy Spirit can only come over you when you desire him more than anything. You have to place him above every other thing. That day was unforgettable. I received a, a strength that was so great inside of me. It was a supernatural strength. I had a love so huge that I couldn't fit it all inside of me. It was a love that I had to share with others. Today, my life is complete in every area. And so every accomplishment that I've ever had, I've gained lots of things, physical things, material things, but nothing can compare to receiving the Holy Spirit. He's, he's my greatest treasure. He's my breath of life. He's everything. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise God. Your clap to Jesus. Now, listen to me. Imagine somebody just like Isabel doing the campaign of Israel, coming to the altar, presenting to God her material sacrifice, like her offering, her sacrifice on the altar, and praying to be blessed. Can God bless a person like this? Hating the father, 12 years not talking to the brother, living this life inside of the church, far from him. Can God bless a person like this? Um, why not? Because before you present the sacrifice, you have to be the sacrifice. That's why we are saying the new spirit, a new you, a new version of you. Gideon's life situation only changed when he received a new spirit. Unless you receive a new spirit, we can pray, you can drink the water, you can do chain of prayers. Let us do this. Bring your bed and sleep in the church. Live here. Nothing will change. But I'm leaving the church. I'm here 24 7. Hey, psst. if you do not receive the Holy Spirit, and I'm going to tell you in a few what to do to receive the Holy Spirit, like she did receive, see the steps that she took. Forgave her brother, her father. She got baptized in water. She sought the Holy Spirit, received the Holy Spirit. Now she has a family. Everything is brand new. But how can you have everything brand new if inside of you everything is old? Grudges, resentment, anger. Through this campaign, you are going to take your life and you are going to do like this. Come here, Eli. 
if you don't mind lying down here. But if you mind lying down anyway. I only have you for now. Yes, lying down. This is a sacrifice. To take your life as it is. Oh, Bishop, I have been dispersed like a whole. I am inside of the church, but I want to kill my brother, my mother, my father. I hate people. I am a very difficult person. I live a life of sins, no problem. This is my daily message. Come as, as she came. But when she gave her life, a new spirit came upon her. She came out of the cave. And now she can testify. Today, we are showing this testimony all over the globe. Every language, every nation today is receiving the story of Isabel. Thank you. Do you want your life to change? Come out of the cave. You are going to have an opportunity now in July to do this campaign. But be ready to sacrifice. First of all, spiritual sacrifice that your life on the altar. Financial sacrifice. The Holy Spirit that will come upon you, will tell you what he wants, how he wants, as he came to Gideon. There was no pastor. The spirit that came upon him told him, Gideon, take the second young bull that belongs to your father, break the altar of Baal, prepare an altar, and make a sacrifice. The spirit. is the Holy Spirit that will tell you what he wants, how he wants for your life to change. Not to improve but for your life to change, first you, inside of you, and all the other things will be added onto you. Please, everybody, stand. Everybody stand. On the 9th of July, this ministry will have its anniversary. Since 1977, we opened this door July 9th. And this year, will be exactly the day of our campaign. From the 9th until the 16th, when we surrender the fast of Daniel. Before you come here to the altar, to take this envelope on the altar, I want to pray together with you. Close your eyes, please. O oh God of the Bible, this campaign is not about emotions. It is not about feelings. But this campaign, my Lord, is to change their story. As we are beginning today, the fast of Daniel, this campaign, O oh Lord, is to change the story of this person that is just like Isabel, Mr. Deliman. They are inside of the cave. Yes, Lord, this person is inside of the cave. Full of oppression, depression, bitterness. She has been a bitter person. But we are praying to you right now. Oh my God. Change the lives. Change the situation of this person. That is saying, I cannot take it anymore. I come into church. I have been from church to church. But my life is still the same. My situation is still the same. Oh God Almighty, we pray to you right now that you may come with your power to change their situation, their lives once and for all. Oh God, this person prays, reads the Bible, but is living a miserable life because you are great. Something great must happen. We saw the story of Isabel, but we don't want just her story. We want to see this person's story. We want to see this person's life change. We don't want to dress up and just come here to the church to praise, worship, and sing, and stay in the same situation. Oh, Lord, there is this person in the hospital watching the TV, in prison, in a nursing home, there is this person inside of the cave. Oh, my father, you made Gideon to be a leader. 
So this person has to become a leader. The life of this person has to change once and for all. Don't let nobody come here on the altar moved by emotions, feelings. But I want this person to come here on the altar for a transformed life, a brand new life. Say after me, oh God, say that strong in Jesus' name. I want my life to change. I want to glorify your name through my life. Amen. If the Spirit of God is calling you for a new story, until now, people have known you, look here please, as a broken vessel, as a miserable life, but God wants to change your story. So then you are going to come this way, on my left hand side, come here on the altar, take these envelopes, and get ready. You can come this side here. Every night, 9.45 after Genesis, we are praying for this campaign. Life change, a new life, a new story. Come this way. Go ahead. You can climb, climb here on the altar. Get your envelope. Change my life. Change my life. Change my spirit. Change my spirit. Give me a chance, Lord. Give me a chance, Lord. Please just one. Please just one more. My soul is wounded. My soul is wounded. And you have the healing. I need a new life. Today. one more my soul is wounded and you have the healing I need a new life today my Lord here I stand within your house Lord Longing to hear your voice, I lay my life before your feet now, because I know you can hear. I wear the scars of a sinner who has gone. But I've tried to come back. I want to come back. I want to come back. To this day, I've got to change. So I decide. I'll never have a cry again. I'll have never to cry again. again. Change my life. Change my spirit. You may have a seat, please. Give me a chance, Lord. Please, just one more. My soul is wounded. My soul is wounded. And you have the healing. And you have the healing. I need a new life to Bible, let us meditate on the Bible, the words, the gospel of John chapter 3, gospel of John chapter 3, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John chapter 3, open your Bible, change my life, change my spirit, 
a chance, Lord. Give me a chance, Lord. Please, just one more. Please, just one more. My soul is wounded. My soul is wounded. And you have the healing. And you have the healing. I need a new life today, I need my Lord. A new life today, my Lord. Say, change my life. Change. Lord, please just one more. My soul is wounded, and you have the healing. I need a new life today, my Lord. I need a new life today, my Lord. I need a new life. about Gideon and the people of Israel. Why did they end up inside of the cave? The scripture says they did what was evil before the Lord. And when a person does what is evil, this person buries himself, his future, hey, and also the plan of God. Do not bear yourself alive. We are going to read John, but I want to quote what it says. Your iniquities have separated. You can read here with me on the screen, please. Isaiah. Your iniquities have separated you from your God. People, whatever separates us, hey, hey, Whatever separates us from God is not of God. Did you get it? Let me say it again. Whatever separates us from God is not of God. Whether money, job, family, love life, especially love life. Satan loves using the love life to separate the people first from the church and then from God. I have this busy schedule. I have this money. I have this family. I have this boyfriend, this girlfriend. If this stuff separates you from God, it is not of God. Eli, where is he? Oh, you need money. You need money. You miss money. Come back to the altar. It's a uh, mommy's boy. No? Listen, please. What separated him from God? Huh? Friends in the hood. Be careful with your friends. Then what else? Money. And then he left the church. He is now rescued by God, the mercy of God. But remember, he left because he was not born of God neither. His mother brought him to the church, a young boy. He grew up inside of the church. Two weeks ago, we were in prison. There is a man there. He has life sentence. He was in the church playing the drums. The drums in the church, in the choir, married, two kids. But this man left the church to do crime. He now has life sentence. Now I ask you, but didn't he know the Bible? He knew. Wasn't he in the church? He was. CBC teachers. He was in the CBC. As you have your kids now in the CBC, he was. He was in the youth of the church. But you know, because he was not born of God, he did not have a new birth. He went back to the world world. Whatever separates you from God is not of God. It's not of God. Come here, Pastor. Pastor Akil, stand here in between of us. Thank you. 
There is something, God is there. There is something between you and God. Who is this? Job, money, family member, a friend, siblings, people at school, co-workers, a boyfriend, a girlfriend. Does these things make you weak in faith? Does these things separate you from your healthy relationship with God? Get rid of it. Hey, excuse me. Get away from me. And then you come closer to God. Because what was separated was removed. This is what the scripture says here. For your iniquity separates you from your God. And your sins have hidden his face from you. So that he will not hear. When you raise your hand, you pray. God says, I don't know you. Why? Because you don't have the Holy Spirit. Those who have the Holy Spirit, they are known by the Lord. They have a relationship with the Lord. Let us read John chapter 3, verse 1. Verse 1. Do you have a, a, a title there in your Bible? The title is what? New birth. This is what we are doing this campaign. New birth. You need to be born again. And hey, who was Nicodemus? Who was Nicodemus? He was a religious man that knew the Bible. Like him, he was in the church hearing the word. The man that was in prison, he was in church hearing the word. But what happened was that he was not born again. Let us read verse 1. Let us go together here in the church and at home read it together. There was a man of the Pharisees named Nicodemus, a ruler of the Jews. This man came to Jesus by night and said to him, Rabbi, we know that you are a teacher coming from God, for no one can do the signs that you do unless God is with him. Listen, Jesus was supposed to be proud. Jesus was supposed to say, oh, wow, he recognized me as the son of God. He is saying that no one, no one does what I do. But Jesus was not concerned about the gifts, miracles that he was doing. See what Jesus answered and said to him. Let us go. Jesus answered and said to him, most assuredly, I say to you, Nicodemus, unless one is born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Listen to me, please. Jesus was supposed to be proud. Which religious leader, a pastor, a deacon, somebody came to say, Pastor, you are a man of God. No one can preach like you. You are a good preacher. This pastor, this bishop, they would explode with their pride. They should be proud of themselves. Oh, wow, everybody likes me. Everybody, everybody likes me. Everybody. But Jesus said, no, my friend, that's not enough to know that I am from God. E you, you have to be born again. If you are not born again, you cannot see the kingdom of God. Hey, that church or this church is not the first one. How many churches have you been? You said a lot? Are you hoping church? How many churches? This church is not the first one. We are not better than anybody. But here, I have to tell you the truth. You know Pastor A, B, C, D. You know your Bible from cover to cover, from Genesis. But if you are not born of God, as Isabel said, baptized in water, receiving the Holy Spirit, I'm sorry. I don't have good news for you. What happened to him and to many others will happen to you soon. Soon. Why? Because maybe you are here to please your mother, to please your friends. 
Many years ago, I told a gentleman, he was working in the church. I saw that he was not seeking God. An old man, just like Mr. De Lima, I called him and I said, my friend, I only see you here at the back when we have the Lord's Supper. If you die today, you go to hell. He said, no, bishop, don't tell me this. I work in the church. I'm guaranteed. I'm here every day. I said, you are here every day working, doing your work, but you don't seek God. You don't seek the kingdom of God. You are in the church, but you are not with God. You are lost. Remember the lost coin? You are just the lost coin inside of the church. And these eyes, you see my eyes here? Green? She said, yes. Like me, you need some glasses. <laughs> these eyes have seen people like him work in the church. When they lose their job, excuse me, they turn their back on Jesus. Why? Because they are in the church for chain of prayers, for the bottle of water, for a job, for a position, because they are pastors. What guarantees me is not what I do, but who I am. Jesus was supposed to say, oh, wow, let me be easy with this guy, because he said, read for me, what he said, rebuy, when he said rebuy, what else? I know that you are teacher coming from God. For no one, let's go. For no one can do the signs that you do unless God. Jesus was supposed to say, wow. Wow. But Jesus knew that what he was doing was the gift of the Holy Spirit. Gift of the Holy Spirit. But Jesus told him, let us read. He answered and said, most assuredly, I say to you, unless one is born again, he cannot, cannot see the kingdom of God. Amen? Please stand. Pastor Fernando, come here with your wife. In a few, that's your pastor, right? No, no, your pastor is Jesus. I caught you. Your pastor, will you today be ordained as the bishop? Clap to Jesus, to Jesus. But, listen up. It is not a promotion. It's not being promoted. But we are going to anoint him in a few. But you know what? We search in his life, in her life, the qualities that Jesus was telling Nicodemus. He is not being anointed to be a bishop because he does miracles, because he helps people. Because he holds service, he do a house visit, he goes to prison. No, that's not the, what we found in him or in them for him to become a bishop. It is not a promotion. But when somebody dies with Jesus, we say that the person was promoted to heaven. This is the only promotion we receive. What he's going to receive today is the confirmation of his ministry to do more, to serve you more, to be an example to the church. What we have found here is not miracles, but character. We do a research to find out whether he is of God or just serving God. Amen? But before we anoint him, I want you to be anointed. I want you to be anointed with the Holy Spirit. Unless you are born again, means a new spirit, you cannot see the kingdom of God. Amen?
And if you want to seek the Holy Spirit, I mean, calling here today those who say, I do not have the Holy Spirit. Bishop, I'm just like Isabel. I want to give my all, everything, give up on everything. I just want to receive the Holy Spirit. Come here before the altar. And he is the one that we are going to seek. And you are going to receive a new spirit. To see the kingdom of God. Come before the altar. The reason why Eli left was because he never received the Holy Spirit. He was not born again. But when he received the Holy Spirit, he doesn't need a push, a boost. He received the Spirit of God coming before the altar. How can I know whether or not I have the Holy Spirit? By the fruits. Not by the miracles. But Bishop, I was unemployed. I received a job. Good for you. Do a good work there. I was sick. I am healed. Amen. Praise the Lord. I have a peace in my, in my family, in my house. Amen. Praise the Lord. But it does not show or prove that you have the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit changes your mindset, your character, your inner being. What you are inside of the church, you are outside. You don't have a double character. You are born of God. Amen? Close your eyes right now. Come, Holy Spirit, I need you. Come, Holy Spirit. Say, I need you. I need you. Come, sweet Spirit. Come, sweet Spirit. I pray. Come with your strength and your power. Come with your strength and your power. Come in your own gentle way. Come in your own gentle way. If you need, if you need the Holy Spirit, you say, Come. Holy Spirit, I need you. Come, sweet Spirit, I pray. Come, sweet Spirit, I pray. Come with your strength and your power. Come with your strength. service today would be void, empty, a disaster if this person does not receive your spirit. This service will be a disaster if this person leaves this place with the same mindset, the same bitterness, anger, grudges, like Isabel. And the most dangerous thing is that this person sooner or later will stop coming, will leave you, will leave the church, because the reality is He's already out. She's already out. Oh, Father God. But this, this day, as we are beginning the fast of Daniel, I pray, Holy Spirit, for a new character, for a new mindset. Nicodemus, only spoke about your gifts, what you did for others. But you said, Nicodemus, 
these miracles are nothing if you don't have a new birth. Oh Lord, make this place here to be a place of birth, like a hospital, a place of birth where children will be born, where children will be born right now. A new woman, a new man. Oh, Holy Spirit, if I could, if I could, Lord. Sometimes we annoy people. People feel disturbed by us because we insist, we persist. Unless you are born again, Unless you have the Holy Spirit, you become Satan's prey. Oh, Father God. Oh, Almighty God. We pray today. Take away this old person. Remove this old man that is hateful, that is bitter, that is angry, that is violent, that lives in prostitution evil thoughts oh Jesus Jesus Christ I pray for a new being he has this person becomes the living creature he has a living being oh a spirit of God work here among us I want this morning souls to be saved but how can the soul of this person be saved if they are in the church for their uh, position, status. This person is in the church holding a title, the title of a pastor, of a deacon, assistant, a member of the church, but behind closed doors where nobody sees there is someone there is something separating this person from you. You knew Nicodemus. And you told him, you can only change when you are born again. So Holy Spirit, touch this person right now. I ask you, I pray to you, Divine Spirit, touch their lives. Ask God to touch you. Do not be silent or listen to my prayer. Pray yourself. Come on. That's right. It is your turn right now. Lord Jesus, I want to change. I want my life to change. I want to have a new life. To have an experience with you. And you who are at home, in the hospital, over there, seek the Lord. Seek the Holy Spirit. Even over there in prison, you can seek the Lord who will come into you. The Lord touches you now. Jesus touches your soul. As you are giving your life, receive his spirit right now. Receive the spirit of the Lord. Just as you are giving to him, he gives to you his spirit. Hallelujah. He taught me. joy in the joy that flies. 
my soul. My soul. Something happened. Something happened. And now I know. the same oh yes you are no longer the same somebody to say he touched me upon these people here to receive the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. silent now just be silent let the Holy Spirit work you don't need to fall on the ground to scream to, to, to run around to fall, no the Holy Spirit does not knock you down he lifts you up be lifted lifted by the Holy Spirit have now an experience with the Lord. He enters your soul. Become a new man. Close your eyes, please. You are going to embrace yourself. If I could, I will hug everybody. To transmit to you what I have. Gold and silver I do not have. But what I have I give to you. 
receive the Holy Spirit. Receive the presence of the Lord. Receive Jesus. Become now a new man, a new woman, a new person. Hallelujahs. Oh, hallelujahs. I love you, Jesus. I adore your holy name. Without any emotion, feelings, receive the assurance of your salvation. As we are beginning this 21 day, you don't need to wait until the end. Even today, you receive the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. Jesus hugs you. Hug yourself. Cross your hands over your shoulders. Jesus embraces you. He hugs you right now. Hallelujah. The Holy Spirit comes upon you. My soul and my spirit have been filled by the power of the Holy Spirit. Be the same again. The same again. My soul and my spirit, my soul and my spirit have been filled by the power of the Holy Spirit. You say, my life, my life will never be the same be again. The same again. My life will never be. Same again. Same again. My soul and my spirit have been filled. Have been filled by the power of the Holy Spirit. By the power of the Holy Spirit. My life will never be. My life. The same again. The Holy Spirit comes upon you, and your life shall never be the same. Be lighter now. Receive peace. The spirit of peace that comes upon you. The spirit of the Lord. I minister the outpouring of the Holy Spirit upon you. Be filled. Filled with the Spirit of the Lord. Hallelujah. As we praise your name. My life will never be. My life will never be the same again. Say my soul and my spirit. My soul and my spirit. I've been filled with the power of the Holy Spirit. My life will never be. My life will never be. My life will never be the same again. Amen. Praise God. Praise the Lord. We praise thy name. We worship you. We give you glory to the name of Jesus. My life will never be the same again. Amen. We are all guaranteed when the Holy Spirit come. Unless the Holy Spirit come, you cannot enter the kingdom of God.
How many of you receive the Holy Spirit today? You receive the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our clap to Jesus shall be stronger. Stronger to him. If just one person had received, would be a feast in heaven. But listen, please. We are beginning our journey to 81 days. Less of us and more of God. Let us seek more the Lord. Let us be more in his presence. Come to the church more often. Even if you are busy work, the church is open. Come straight to the altar. Pray to him. Come before this altar to 81 days. In the morning, in the afternoon, in the evening, we have a service. I cannot make it to the service. So just drive by, pass by. You are allowed to come to the altar, seek the Lord, and go to do whatever you have to do. Read the Bible. If you approach, he approaches as well. And everything or everyone that is separating you from God, whoosh, remove it. Amen? You may go back to your place. We are going to consecrate now Pastor Fernando as the bishop of the church. Amen. Amen. As I said, it is not a. Huh? He's going to be promoted only when he dies. Then you are promoted from earth to heaven. Amen. But what makes him to be called anointed as a bishop is the character. Not what he does, but who he is. How long have you been a pastor? 23 years, Bishop. 23 years. I was not even born yet. <laughs> Can I have my ID? 23 years. Where have you been serving God? I have been serving in Jamaica, Trinidad and Tobago, besides Brazil as well. Anybody here from Jamaica? In Jamaica, yeah, ma'am? Anybody from Trinidad? Trinidad, Tobago. By the way, today I'm traveling to go to Trinidad. We are going to hold a service and also consecrate another bishop over there. It's for the glory of God, for the growth of the kingdom of God. How long have you been married? Uh, almost 15 years. Oh, he forgot. How long have you been married? 15. 15. <laughs> we don't keep dates. 15 years of marriage, serving God for 23, and wherever he has been. Here in the States, where have you been? I have been in Houston, at San Antonio, Maryland as well, and now here, Bishop. Amen. We are going to consecrate. Give me the oil. Amen. I told you that in this church we exercise, right? Stand up, please. <laughs> Stand up. I want you to be the witness because God is anointing your pastor as a bishop and the more blessings will come upon you. Amen? Let me anoint them. Oh, Holy Spirit, my Lord and the Father. For the growth of your kingdom on earth, you have chosen Fernando and a friend to serve you around the world. They were called as a youth to serve you. He did not know one day would be, he could be in Florida, in Maryland, in Jamaica, in Trinidad. And he doesn't know from here where he will go. Oh, Holy Spirit. We have known their story, their testimony. We have known them as a servant of God. Oh, my Lord. And when I pour this oil, even though they will wash, they are head, 
but I want the anointing of the Holy Spirit to be upon them. It's not a promotion, but more responsibilities with the souls, pastors, pastors' wives, auxiliaries, assistants, the church and the churches. Oh, Lord, let this anoint be upon them. Use, my Lord, this couple as their spiritual leaders to make especially other disciples and to bless my father's souls. So, I present to you this oil in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name. I bless them and you anoint the anointing of the Holy Spirit. As I lay my hands, place yours, my Father. Bless this new journey of their lives. They have been through a lot injustice, persecutions, trials tribulations. I know, my Lord, even things that I do not know, but you do. The time is that they almost gave up because it was so hard. But you kept them for this day. You did. So now, my Father, I bless and ordain this couple, in the name of the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit. Amen. 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 So, since it's not graduation, I don't need to say congrats. God bless you. In this church, we don't give a certificate. We give a weapon. I know they already have this study Bible of the church, but I brought this one they are going to carry with them wherever they go. They already have one where they are anointed as pastor, now anointed as a bishop, and this weapon is yours. Amen? Praise the Lord. Praise Jesus. Amen. As the new bishop, he's going to bless you. The first prayer as the bishop before you go home. Amen. Amen, friends. Lift your hands to the Lord right now. And now let the weak say, I am strong. Now.